Welcome to Hotline TV, everyone. I'm Amy Walter. And I'm John Mercurio. Hey, Amy. Hi, John. Do you remember that show, Early Edition? You remember, it's about oh, that guy yeah. who got the newspaper a day early for some reason that none of us can remember. <laughs> All right, well, today we're completely ripping off that concept in a new game we're calling Early Edition or Headlines of the Future. Headlines, headlines of, of the Future. future. Oh, right, that's so, a good one. All right, that's a, that's isn't a that a good, nice, nice, that's a nice idea? So future sort of, headlines. Sort of that concept. Okay. All right, so Amy Walter, have you retrieved the headlines from the Hotline Time Machine, such as I it did. is? I did. I did. I stole it from the CNN hologram um, station. <laughs> from election night? From election night hologram. And what they didn't know is if you, you just have to move a few wires, and uh -huh. you can actually travel in time. A couple different codes, right. codings. Yeah, so okay. Jessica Yellen wouldn't look like Princess Leia. Correct. She'd look like Jessica Alba. All okay. right, here's what I found. Listen to this headline. Yeah, interesting. Can you believe this? this is from the future. This is, this is from the future. So these are from the day before the 2012 Iowa caucus. That's where I wanted to go to. Good, good, I mean, good, good. you know, forget about betting on sports or the stock market. Who would want to do that? Those of us at the hotline want to know what's going to happen in 2012, right? right? So this in is Iowa all about caucus. 2012. So this, is, this is what I found. Listen to this headline. Palin earned surprise endorsement. No, no, I found that this is the, the, the oh, this the is whole, the font. But we have a whole production team that put together this great headline just, just for our viewers. Just for our viewers. And apparently in the future, the font is going to look <laughs> very old-fashioned. Like an old-style country western. <laughs> That's right. Because they're going to say it's not old-fashioned to read the paper. Anyway. Right. Because they're... Remember, only people 90 and above will be reading newspapers. All right. And voting in Iowa She Caucus. earned surprise endorsement from Paul Schaefer. Paul Whoa, Schaefer. Whoa, he's still wow. holding a grudge after this whole. So I guess that assumes that this whole David Letterman thing just doesn't go away. This whole David Letterman thing definitely has legs. I say, I'm not sure it lasts necessarily through 2012. I mean, but he clearly is more than happy to let it go on. He went on last night, seven minutes he spent about uh, on this on the show. Sort of defended himself, sort of admitted I that know, he was stupid. But he sort stupid. of admitted he was over the line, but not worth it, willing to give. Not really willing to give the give apology in. that he needed. Everybody's wrong here. This is one of those silly, silly stories. Um, he's wrong, I think, first of all, and should have uh, gone further in apologizing. But look, the Palins and their conservative friends and Greta Van Sustern and all of them, uh, I think, sort of overstepping and expanding what he said. Is it possible for Sarah Palin to ever be in the news Without for something that is positive? No, not ever. Name me, and if you are faithful viewer, singular, um, can think of one time over the past couple of uh, months that she's done something where it's been a overwhelmingly favorable. Write us, let us know. Right, all right, moving right, right along. All right, but who's, who is next? All right. Old-fashioned write-up. In the old-fashioned old newspaper, dead tree write-up. Mm. All right, Huckabee's metaphors, I'm going to read it from behind, continue to gross out Iowa electorate poll fines. Yeah. Clearly. Well, so this is, this is referring to, he talked a lot these last couple days about the mushy middle. He talked about the mushy middle. Mushy, squishy. He was in Iowa. He's in Iowa campaigning for Vanda Plaats, who's running for governor. Uh, against Chet Culver, and he did. He made the point that, look, Republicans need to be Republicans. They need to play to the base. They need to be conservative. They can't go to the middle, or they get squishy middles. But that's a real change for Mike Huckabee. I, I thought he liked to talk about how thin he was. Thin abs. Right. You know, uh, Do you think this is a way for sort of making up for the fact that he may be a little bit heftier than he was in the middle of the campaign? That is very fascinating. And maybe really it's he is saying this to himself. Mm -hmm. It's really like a self prep talk about don't, as soon as you start moving over to the left, you're going to start getting fat. And that, for most people. And that's why you got thin. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. good. Very interesting. All right. Finally. Speaking of kind of chunky people. Ex Mississippi governor, all known here as Haley Barber, polls. Uh, you can't oh, read I can't read backwards. <laughs> I don't know how to read backwards. He leads polls in Iowa, New Hampshire, but is dead last in his home state of Mississippi. Clearly, Ooh. well, all right, clearly Republicans are still upset about the fact that back in, way back in 2009, mm. when he started traveling to Iowa, New Hampshire, when he first got the bug, um, he, Mississippi was right in the middle of a budget crisis. A le the legislature wasn't done with their session. And Barbara said, look, <laughs> I'm extremely popular here at home. I can go to Iowa, New Hampshire, Without in the middle of this budget crisis yep. with no repercussions. And what he didn't realize was that that was not true. And right, so this is fact, why you it, see and, Tim Pawlenty saying, I'm just giving it up altogether. It's a lot easier to campaign when you don't have all this other <laughs> nagging stuff like the legislature and re-election and things like that. Right. right. And he'll be done with his term in 2011. 11, right? The beginning right. of it? He doesn't run. He won't run for next, another term, probably, um, if he does run for president. Bobby Jindal, though, in a similar situation, off-year election, has to decide what to do in a very, very late 
uh, time period. We'll talk about that on another show because unfortunately this was a fun game. This was. This was a I really fun game. I want to do it more and game. more and more. I can't wait to do everything more and more and more. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Until next time, I'm John Mercurio. And I'm Amy Walter. Today's show was brought to you by Baja Fresh. Right, John? <laughs> we'll say whatever we're told to say <laughs> on Hotline TV. Bye-bye.